You're gonna complain at the angle.
Hey guys, Harry here. Uh, back here with another Brick Lane vlog. This isn't the same series this time. Um, I'm doing the uh, top out series. So we've got this nice, um, the nice square top out. I'm going to call it because even though it's not square, uh, it was part of the nice square fourth lift video. So um, I had a look at the prices for this house. Really good, actually, really good price for for the house and. Now I've got officially two pots under my belt, you know, band lifts, shall I say. Uh, two pots from Joist, basically under my belt now. Uh, I've got a pretty good idea of these, these houses at Avant, and, and they're, uh, they're pretty good, they're pretty good. There's nothing that's really made me think, oh, one in hell, I dropped on one here. Uh, apart from, you know, doing the, uh, doing the cavity cleaning, I think a few people thought and when I meant I was spending a day cleaning cavities, they actually thought like I was cleaning my actual, you know, the ties and the, the damp trays that I'd been working over. No, that wasn't the case. You know, any tie tapping and tray cleaning that um, that was basically above damp level, above ground level, uh, it only took me about an hour and a half, two hours to, you know, clean up or tidy any, you know, holes in backs of bricks and stuff, you know. Any little bits of, uh, you know, pre-inspection, you know, rattling. A couple of hours and that was it on my own. But when I talk about cleaning cavities, these houses have a bottom radon tray, a 300 mil high tray as well. I don't, I don't understand why they made the tray 300. I don't know if that's the spec, but uh, I normally just make them 225 high a block. But the, all these were 300. Um, basically, what the deal was is basically another subby firm took over before the firm, you know, was work was on this site before the firm, the subby firm I worked for uh, came on. So I've we'd end up taking over a load of houses that weren't by the subby I worked for. So we had to, we got paid to clean the bottom radon tray that was absolutely packed. You know, just think of a, you know, uh, basically up to build two, so up to floor joists without anyone cleaning the cavities and that was what you were dealing with. Um, Hessian in the cavities, fucking glued together with two layers of gobbo. You know, we were pulling out 150, 150 thick sausages, uh, you know, 150 deep by obviously 125 wide, probably, probably even higher, probably up to a block thick sometimes. Some of the, uh, some of the gobbo were to pulling out that radon tray, so that's why it took us at least a day, uh, for me and the old man, uh, to do. Uh, to clean out so uh, that's what I meant by cleaning cavities I think people got the wrong idea they were saying oh get the fucking labourer to do it get this get that but um, even when it comes to tapping tie wires and cleaning cavity trays I wouldn't trust a hod carrier to do it because number one they could bust all the trays number two they could miss a load of ties uh, and then number three and most importantly they could get you pulled your house pulled um, I got a couple of pulls on a house uh, I'd forgot to put my starter trays in when I did the step trays. Um, honest mistake, but you know they weren't they weren't too bothered. But if you know if for instance I'd have been more aware of stuff like that, I'd have looked and thought, hold on, I'll put the starter trays in, I'll fix that quickly. 
you know, half an hour job or whatever. Uh, but it's something if you get your whole carrier tapping ties, cleaning your cavity trays out, you know, you've got a lot of risks on your hands and you just haven't got the professional eye over your work that you would if you were doing it yourself. So a lot of people say, oh yeah, you, you know, you're wasting time, you could be building or, you know, hod carrier could be loading out, etc. Which that is the idea, you know, I always try and tap tap or clean, car- clean cavities on a flat start so hoddies can get in front and load up for a couple hours and then start you know you are losing that little bit of time but the cleaner you keep your cavity trays the cleaner you keep keep your ties the easier like for instance i'm going to be leaving blocks out on my next plots uh, over upstairs trays um just so i can access them and clean them little step ladder inside climb through the hatch clean my trays out over meter boxes um knock a couple of bricks out take me like fucking 15 10 15 minutes knock a few bricks out even if i'm taking over a band lift or whatever knock a couple of bricks out and that's it clean the tray job done it's you know it can take 15 20 minutes to clean your trays if, if all the if all the the accessibility is there and then you know you know 20 20 30 minutes tapping tie wires that's it um and you can be done in an hour you can be ready for inspection in an hour Hoddies could have loaded out in front, um, got you a good start, gobble loaded everything, and you're not losing any time there really. Um, uh, so that's what I meant. But anyway, today we're just building these uh, timber back cut ups or, you know, timber top outs or whatever you want to call them, timber frame top outs, spinal panel, smart roof, whatever you want to call it. Um, I prefer these, I hate block work on cut ups it is just a wind sail you're up there high up the block work just catches the wind your whole cuss up's moving tie wires in po- point in the back is a massive deal for me i hate doing point in the back of block cut ups so you know um this timber fixings that you have to bang in no issue to me i'd rather do these every day of the week um basically so the strategy i took building these from what you can see um basically the bricks you know they tend to move they don't like to stay straight so the one and the putting the one brick on each side fits brick on running it doesn't fly because it just pulls the brick so what i resorted to doing um was big big corners and i was never a big fan of big corners for top outs i obviously only got limited footage here because i ran out so you're gonna see some more you know uh you know some more nose bleeding lift footage but and when it comes to top outs, you know, I was never a fan of building big corners up until, you know, I saw uh, Kurt Moll pass brickwork, you know, the original Facebooker of Pick and Dip. I, I saw him on Facebook many years ago doing Pick and Dip and uh, and uh, he's got a YouTube channel and I saw a few videos of him on head cam doing cut ups and they like to do sort of medium sized corners. Um, and the big thing, the big bonus, uh, he didn't really do any voiceovers or anything, explain anything, but he was just doing the cup. And a big reason why, you know, now I like to do big corners is, especially on these soapy bricks, is, you know, you get out of you get out of the corner and you get that face rinse off it away from you, you're not bending over. Um, so basically, uh, on a lot of corps now, you with full fill insulation or blown-in insulation, you know, they want a tray in 450 above plate. Um, so that's the case on ours, uh, six course on your gable, then a, a damp tray in. So what I was doing, I was building a seven course corner or six course corner or whatever. Uh, first each side, running that in, tray on, and then I'd set up um, and build a big, you know, 12 course corner. And because you, you know, you're, you're reducing one brick at each side, You've got to go out 12 bricks um, and with a six foot level you'll just about get 12 bricks to get a 12 course corner um, and then you've got a total of um, 18 course you've gone up then and um, normally I, I probably wouldn't go 12 bricks that's what i did on this in this occasion normally gets you up 18 course but what i normally go out is probably tail out 10 bricks get a 10, 10 course corner that takes you 16 and if you want to milk reach off a milk crate you can go as high as probably 22 so then you know to only get 22 there off 16 you only have to make uh, go out uh you're only going to go out eight bricks 
to get an eight course corner so um so that i'll take you 24 so you're only going to go out six or seven bricks again uh so you're doing a six course corner each side running um 10 court you know like a 10 course corner each side running you know obviously remembering your ties and then you just do another six course corner again so and then you normally can do that last you know four to six course on a milk crate and i didn't do this on the first cut up because um i was just seeing how how it looked when i finished and there was you know there's still quite a little quite a bit of meat in the top in the in the table lift so i think i could have after laying that that last course standing on a milk crate gives you an extra 225 elevation um i could have took it to 22 no sweat so 22 23 next time uh, i'm gonna take the other cut up up because uh, today we were it was the first day the missus started on site she had to get inducted we couldn't find the timber ties in the morning so we lost we got there at eight because we slept in and had to take the young into nursery and then we didn't get to site till nine then didn't like basically lay a break till 10 uh, so you know a really late start there for me at the moment uh, but normally if we get laying bricks by eight o'clock which is a was pretty much standard um quarter to eight, eight o'clock um, I'll be easily be able to, you know, um, at least have an extra hour and a half, at least an extra hour on that on that time we finished today. So um, I'll definitely take it an extra three course, and then just refu reduce the fat in the uh, in the table lifts, because you know you want to get to the point where you get to your table lift, build two big corners, run it in, and then you're free handing it with the level for the last little peak. That's all you want to get it to, you know. That's that's, that's ideal for a top out. You know, t you basically for a table lift, two big corners, run them in, a little bit of free and done. That's it. That's the, that's that is literally the, the strategy you want to be doing for top outs. Um, I love the facial and soffit ones. They're dead easy. No detail. I've done all the sailing cups. I've done cups where you got to do the cuts yourself. It's just a pain in the ass. Don't do them. Just. Just if you're on a site that has cut-ups like that, just move. It's not worth it. I've built them. Don't make any money on them. You know, like today, I was with the missus. We did a, we did a, about 500 bricks in six hours. Probably close to 550 if I'm all on it. If I'm completely honest. Um, but we top outs. You know, I like to leave myself a bit of, a bit on. So you know, we probably left 100 bricks on on each. You know, if we leave 100 bricks on each cut-up. Uh, and then you know we give ourselves a nice bonus for the table lift and um, under bricks you know we'll leave under bricks on that we'd already delayed so but obviously it goes for a price but a price the price is normally just exactly the amount of bricks that's there which is nice because obviously the timber frame things you, you don't really get paid for the ties but those timber ties take as long as it does to put a wall tie in and obviously you don't get paid for wall ties so it's no issue to me really so that is uh that is my top out strategy i didn't get any footage of me running it in um obviously because i've run out i didn't i didn't charge my gopro not gopro my Picasso. and i uh sorry i cut my i must cut my thumb again opening a can that's a nightmare and um so we we're just filming on the phone i was doing obviously the big corner pick and dip style free hand you know it's, it's still you know it's easy enough to do pick and dip free hand it works out very well on these bricks um, obviously every brick has its own way of being laid properly but you know I like I like this style yes long, long spread pick and dip beautiful um, when it came to keeping your trays clean on the cavities um, or did uh, first six course didn't put anything in the cavity um, I just you know just built it without anything in um, and then after that, I just, uh, that was it. That was it. I just put a lap behind every six then. After the first six courses, the tray goes on, obviously. And then that was it. Light in every, every six then. And then when I get to the table, the lat can probably stay in because it'll be narrow enough to stretch the whole length and then you just be slid out. That's one reason why I want to take it a couple more course higher on the, uh, on the adjacent side because I just make everything a lot a lot easier uh, less gear to carry up the scaffold you know you know it could be an extra you know an extra 120 bricks if you don't take that extra three so 
um, it's definitely it's definitely beneficial at least an extra 80 bricks so well apart from that you know we got uh, next week's gonna be a good week we got a new style got my mate coming back um, he's gonna be working with full time missus is gonna be doing two days a week I think so we're gonna have two two oddies for two days a week um, I don't know how it's gonna go with two of us uh, but obviously Mel's free so although I'm paying her a wage it's basically just a tax haven for me I'm paying her <laughs> a wage even though sometimes we may not have covered her wage but it just goes into the same household anyway so uh, in effect I'm basically gifting her probably like 20 I'm probably paying her 20 or 30 quid on those day, every day she's working in effect with her paying her bills which I'm already paying anyway and then the tax that I'll have be saving, not paying it to myself. And then basically, you know, stuff that she needs to buy for the house, etc. that I'd have had to give her money for anyway. It's effectively free on the days she works. Um, I know it's not money in my pocket, but it's money in the family's pocket, which I ain't got to pay out. So in effect, I have more, I'm making more money. I'm saving more money. I have no work for me than not so um you know some days we'll smash us we'll, we'll cover us money easy um especially the days with me and dean you know uh, dean when i get him on the trowel when i get mel on the trowel uh you know we're, everyone's going to be covering wages effectively but it's uh it's going to be a big help for me in the long run to avoid a lot of tax because i'm not limited company i'm just a you know, a self-employed sole trader. Um, I don't see the point in becoming a limited company at the moment because I just don't earn enough. I don't earn enough, I don't work long enough, I have a lot of days off. Um, you know, I'm not that fast. I don't have a lot of people making me any money. Do you know what I mean? None, none of my workers are, uh, are making me money. You know, they're all just helping me out, whether it's my old man, any of the lads I'm employing, they're only just covering the money, so they're not actually making me anything um you know so i'm not a super duper fucking stupendous earner um at all you know i earn what an average brit layer earns on day on day on uh on day work you know and what does a day work brit layer earn um what a thousand pound a week work 48 weeks a year you know less rainy less weather days so Take another four weeks off that, you know, you're looking at 44, 40, 50 grand, probably 40 to 45 grand a year if you're lucky. Um, and on price, that's about what I'll earn as well. You know, I'll probably earn it with doing less hours than probably a day work bricklayer, but, you know, probably might work out the same. So that's about what every bricklayer is earning these days. If you're earning around 40,000 a year, you're doing pretty well. Uh, I know there's guys earning 60, 100, fucking hell, God knows what, you know, what some uh, crazy bastards are earning doing private work or doing uh, weekend work, working seven days, but working five days a week for me, if you can earn 40,000 in a year, steady away, no stress, that is good enough for me. Um, because all that happens if after you start earning more than 50,000, you just pay more tax anyway so then you have to sort of start weighing up whether you become a limited company to limit the amount of tax you pay uh, and then you have to pay wages to other workers who are working for so who are working for you so then it becomes a bit of a more of a business but you know it's uh it's one of them it's one of them it's um it's each to their own and um that's that's my plan that's my plan it's just to it'd be nice you know i really enjoyed it with the missus with me you know we i spend a lot of time at work spend a lot of time away from the family and at least it's benefiting my son getting some edu a bit of early years education uh, a bit of you know developmental work with it you know at nursery and then the missus you know it gives her something to focus on as well because she was doing um acrylic nails but same thing again you get paid for a call and i said i might as well pay you because effectively i'm not paying you i'm just doing myself a favor and helping you out as well so um that's basically 
what we come down to, it's just a fucking sensible, it's a sensible solution, yeah, but yeah, it's been a good week to be honest, it's been a good week all considered, we lost one day this week, I worked four days, um, um, I technically, I'd say I'd class it as three and three quarter, um, or three and a quarter with what, what actually, three and a half with what actually got done because the Tuesday, I, you know, we didn't start well nine and I left at two. So that, you know, nine and two, that, that I don't, I don't class that as a full day. We arrived at nine today, um, and we didn't leave well five. So two, that's three hours, you know, that's, you know, even if you do, nine wall if you know even if you do nine wall five that's eight hours and if you're not walling for the first hour like i was this today and then you're having an hour snap that's six hours um but like a nine wall two you know it's not even nine wall five so um nine wall five is eight hours nine wall two is five hours but with an hour snap that's four and i class four hours as you know half a day at least, you know, four to four and a half hours is half a day. So this week I've done four and a half days, three and a half days, you know, and we've, we've earned a good wage. We've earned a good wage again for the hours, the days when the hours we've done. And this is why I emphasize to loads of bricklayers out there count your fucking hours. Don't count your days, count your hours. A day isn't a day if you haven't put the work in. You have to count the hours you've been working. Um, been uninterrupted, lost time with multiple things, count your hours, uh, it is a massive thing, you know, I try to work at 8 o'clock, well 4.30, that is 8.5 hours, 9 hours at a push, half 7, half 4, 9 hours at a push with a 1 hour snap, so I'm doing 8 hours max of work, um, I've done sometimes a little bit longer, but if you can do eight hours solid work a day, you're going to earn some good money in this game, especially the price at the moment. They seem to be trending upwards and upwards. Um, it's enough. It's enough. You don't need to do more than eight hours. Um, you know, if you're laying 100 bricks an hour, you know, you can... Eight hours, that's 800 bricks. No sweat, you know. If you're doing six, 700 bricks in a day, you're doing well. That's, you know, that's what you should aim for. You're a fast bricklayer if you're doing that. I don't care wh whoever you are or what anyone says. If you're doing six, seven, eight hundred bricks, if you're doing north of 600 bricks a day on your own, you're fast. If you're doing seven and eight, you get in towards, you know, seriously advanced. Um, and if you're into the 1,000 range, your cluster's basically elite in my eyes. I've touched 950. I've not touched it since. Um... My best day was 800 on this site and I think I'll hit a thousand before the year's through in the right conditions. Um, I just need to get on the right lift with the right runs with the right help and we'll, we'll crack we'll crack four figures eventually um, in a day but you know we just need I need the right I need the right support there to do it but um, yeah you know it's you, if you hit if you're laying a thousand bricks a day you're, you're in the elite status in my eyes and there's not many who actually do it there's not many who actually do it you ask any any bricklayer who's laid a thousand bricks or what lays more than that you ask him how, how often they do it and you know will not do it that often even the ones who can do it so anyway guys thanks all for watching that's my little video on cut ups top outs um you know you can take a Take the concrete up 20 courses in a day, no sweat. You can see it's been done right here. Six hours, so. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Um, have a good weekend. And I uh, hope you guys are enjoying these more consistent videos. I'm putting some effort in for you guys. You know, thanks a lot for the support. Uh, hit the like button. Comment, show some love. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.